it's been a while since I don't talk about the QReader API, so it might be good to do a quick video about it. How do you access that? Well, uh, if you go to the traditional view, go to this hamburger thing and click here on the button Interactive API for Developers, you are sent to this page or uh, you can actually put this on, on, fr on the front of the uh, IP address or hostname of QReader, API underscore Docker, that will take you there as well. You don't need this stuff on the right. Now, what are the things that you can do? Basically, most of the product, I cannot say everything, but uh, everything that I have looked for, you can actually do from here. So, for example, if we go here on their analytics, and that's the way that you will explore it. There's a documentation, but it's very terse. So, if you want to get the information from the rules, they are here. More on, the, more on how you actually exercise these later. If you want to deal with building blocks, that's the uh, uh, you know, the actual rules. The, uh, on the aerial side, you get, if you want to do searches for logs or flows, well, here you have an event is the uh, the logs and flows are, of course, the flows. And you specify that name here when you go into database and then you specify for example if I put here events that would be on the database name and I can click here try out and what this interface allows you to do is to exercise this and so when you get 200 back that's a return code that indicates everything is well and it builds this uh, URL there's also a curl statement uh, if you prefer to, to access it that way and by the way, I, I got in because in the same browser that I am, I have authenticated uh, to to Curator. So more on that in a second. So that's how you uh, work on that. Let's see some other things that you can do before I go into an example. Uh, here, you, for example, if you have searches by the search ID, you can actually exercise that searches from the outside. Uh, the configuration, you know, there is a, there's an asset model where you can, you know, look for individual assets in the asset database. I mean, this stuff is really, again, al almost entire product, if not everything, uh, is actually in here. You get data, you want to see what offenses are, well, you click here, you look for all the offenses. Again, as usual, the first way that you that you go here, uh, no parameters are required. Notice that nothing is in red here. All you need to do is click try out, and it will show you all the offenses that we saw before in the, in the new UI, right? These are all the offenses right here. And if you want more details about one in particular, you get the offense ID and you drill down in here and specify the, the actual offense ID and, right now let's uh, let's use let's do this with an example let's say we want to manipulate some data into reference sets so I'm using the free reference data management app to visualize those things and I went into reference sets and let's say that I'm looking for a reference set called malware malware IPs I believe there's one yeah here it is and it has only one element 124 to 40 198 66 good now and this tells you this is nice because it tells you which uh, rules actually uses this uh, reference set but now let's do this from the outside so let's go back to our API and those are on the reference data section. So is reference set. So we go here on the sets. And if we try it like this, it's going to bring all the reference set that it is. No, but we want, we, we also know the name. The name is called malware IP. So we scroll down, go here where it says name, and we'll see that this time when we scroll down here, this parameter is required. And what we're going to do, we're going to get malware IPs. 
just like that. We click try out and we get the same answer that we got before 124 240 right okay so we are progressing on how to do this uh, and that's the way you get data if we want to post data meaning we want to put something in the air well it's very similar so now we're going to have two parameters one is going to be the reference set as before malware ips and let's say that i want to put 10.10.10.1 .10 .10 just for sake of the example and I click here try out and I get 200 means that's good and if I go into this uh, reference set let me actually refresh this let me go reference data management I didn't show that before if I go on their reference sets and search here for malware IP we should have two IPs there let me click here on the search malware IPs here is now I have two what is the other one the one I put there right and you can delete the reference set if you want to but so that's how you exercise the API but once you have gotten that uh, HTTP syntax built how do I access it from the outside let me actually do this in two steps. First, I'm going to show you uh, another tool for exercising the REST API from the outside uh, to bring you closer to what you probably want to do, which is to do this from a Python program. So, I have a rested uh, uh, REST uh, client, and this is uh, generic. The one thing that you need to do is that you need to put a token. So, you need to go into your... Uh, admin console go on to authorize services and grab a token from the air or create one and uh, shouldn't reuse one that exists and remember after you generate a token you need to deploy changes for that to be valid once you have that you put it here put the the header fields called sec as in security or capital and here is the actual uh, value of it This is uh, what I was trying before. I'm, you know, trying with building blocks, but let me actually bring the one I just created right now. So I'm going to grab these and I'm going to go to my client here. I'm going to paste that in here and I'm going to add the, the next address. Right? And I'm going to put that, I'm not going to do a get, I'm going to do a post. Let's actually do it. I actually put the token I forgot to put the token before and when I did that I get the 200 and if we go back to that uh, that app we'll see that we have the subsequent address now let's move one step further let's, what if I want to do this now that I know how this works I have my authentication token and I'm doing this from the outside how do I move into doing this from a Python well uh, what I'm going to show you here is a code that was actually written by a friend of mine called Bruno Silva on something that we were doing with another product. And let me actually go there. And by the way, if you don't know, uh, when you go into any in the video description of all my videos and you click here to the box folder, public box folder, and in here, I believe that is on page two or page three. I put something with big fix that we were doing here. Here it is. Big fix integration console option script. And there are two Python programs that Bruno wrote a while back. And um, he documents his very he writes very neatly and he documents his stuff. You may want to go to this because this part it talks to big fix. And this is the part when they use the API to talk to Korea. And notice that we have that HTTPS stuff that was actually created for us but he actually replaced every one of those variables by the variable name of his program when he gets the returns back he parses them and you know this can help you in case that you've never done this before this piece of code will help you write your python program to get put whatever you you want to do into qradar 